He has a remote control in his pocket <laughs> that apparently he's using to. Yeah. Um, uh, it's like a universal remote control, right? If your girlfriend goes to use the internet there, I can tell you the password of your girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, that was good money. <laughs> Which was working in a in a sex toy factory. In a sex toy factory. Yeah, I was filling dildos. <laughs> <laughs> and we were told to hack Google. We mm-hmm. didn't know what we're doing, uh, and that got me into trouble. I was arrested by Interpol. You were arrested by yeah, Interpol. Right here on Church Road. This is financially incorrect. I'm your host Barack, and we have a new episode today. I have with me. A tech bro, part-time lecturer, and an entrepreneur in the name Bright Gameli, who's here with me today. A party animal as well. A what? A party animal. Oh, a party animal. <laughs> <laughs> a party animal. You know, I actually do know that. I actually do know that, yeah. Well, when, I, I, when, I know where you're when, going. <laughs> <laughs> when Mercury, when Mercury was, used to exist yeah, on Fridays. Yeah, Mercury was Mercury. I, you know, oh, man. I saw you a few times at, at, at Mercury. Yeah. and a party animal i guess he'll tell us a bit more about that but so today we're here to figure out um bright's money journey but before that i'll let him describe what being a tech bro in his perspective means okay yeah. well thank you so much for for inviting me yeah Barak. sure uh i mean being a tech bro is, is is somebody who is so groomed in tech yeah loves tech dream tech walk tech yeah like everywhere you go, tech. Yeah. And I think I've been living that life for some time now, especially in the cybersecurity space. Yeah. So it's funny that I never thought this would be my life. Yeah. <laughs> Where everywhere I go, somebody will say, oh, I remember you from this TV show. Mm-hmm. You were Dr. King Ori or mm-hmm. something like that. Mm-hmm. You're a tech guy. Yeah. Or somebody don't even know that cybersecurity, like ah, that guy, the, the, mm-hmm. the tech guy. Yeah. You know, that, that's basically what a tech what it bro is. is. Yeah. Well, to validate that, yeah. um, Bright spent the last, I mean, we've been sitting um, in, in this office for about half an hour and he's spent a good chunk of that time trying to figure out, trying to, he has a remote control in his pocket <laughs> that apparently he's using to, um, yeah. um, uh, it's like a universal remote control, right? It can copy remote, yeah. it can intercept traffic, yeah. it can intercept Wi-Fi, it can control every, so like when I came here, I didn't have the remote for the air conditioning. Yeah, yeah. So basically cloned it. Yeah. Uh, I can call it RFID tags, um, car keys, some of them can be copied as well. Yeah. And also... So these push to start, you could be able to get into a car and start... Most of them. Yeah. But majority of them have a security feature where okay. they, they, their key randomizes, so yeah. But I love the fact that I keep learning new things about this tech. Yeah. And the objective is to be able to control traffic lights. So we have eventually. No, we have no... <laughs> eventually. That I have to do. I don't know when, but I know eventually yeah. I should uh, be able to... So every day I learn new things. Yeah. That's why I keep yeah. on checking to see which vendors of systems doesn't work. Yeah. TVs... Uh, air conditioners. Yeah, you know. Yeah, so, and see so what far. the next, the next, the next learning is there. The next target. Okay, right. <laughs> yeah. So let's get into it. Let's get into your 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 journey. First of all, Bright has a PhD. Yes. Um, which he got at twenty eight. You got you started at twenty six. Um, completed twenty eight. Yes. Um, so Bright has a PhD. Um, and born and bred and raised in Ghana. Yes. Yeah. So that's yeah. where your journey begins yes yeah maybe you can tell us a, a little bit about that so originally i'm from ghana yeah uh been in kenya for 21 years now okay in and out mm-hmm. um but i came to kenya in 2002 because of my parents my dad got a job here yeah and when he was about to leave after he, after his first term they just kept on telling him look we need one more <laughs> yeah <laughs> one more term yeah and kept on going up the ranks um so we've been here for some time um so i spent my high school here in st mm-hmm. mary's mm-hmm. where did my high school from so from here so i joined in from two okay from two kenyan system kenyan system yeah and i was told dude uh, you're not faithful from two yet no oh. I, I joined from three yeah and i was told you're not faithful from two from three okay so then like you was, were behind yeah that was one term okay behind so the next term i just realized you know let me just go back and start mm-hmm. from two properly yeah um, it was a bit weird for me, you know, you feel like you're dumb, but repeating a class. Yeah, I wasn't really repeating because of the change of the system from Ghana okay. to Kenya. So they from two, from three, and I did IB. Yeah. Uh, one and two. Um, then I went to Daystar University to yeah. do applied computer science. Okay. Which, yeah. Maybe before you go into that, maybe let me ask you, I guess having grown up, I'm assuming from two, you're what, 15, maybe there about? Yeah, 14, 15, there about. So yeah. what was 
um, life like in Ghana? What was it like growing up in Ghana? And if there are any, any, any distinctive differences between there and here? Yeah, so the Ghanaian system definitely is different. Mm-hmm. And mannerisms of everything is different. Mm-hmm. The culture is so different. Mm-hmm. So coming to Kenya, it was a whole complete culture shock. Yeah. Um, like, for example, I never used to hear people shrub a lot. Okay. And then I came to Kenya, it was a normal thing for a particular tribe. You know? Oh, like... They... Like, like the L and R... Right. Oh, you don't have a comparison of that in Ghana? No, I okay, not until I came here. <laughs> Just a weird thing for me. Uh, the way people uh, relate with each other, the yeah. way people do stuff is just, it's, it's quite different when yeah. I came. Um, so then the school the system, the curriculum is a little bit different from Ghana. Yeah. So Is Ghana, it the same number of years? The Ghana, yeah. It's, it's, it's the same. So it's... Still, it's, it's Eight years primary, four years, two or three secondary. years in Ghana. Okay. For for high school. Okay. Then so we have um, eight years in. Uh, we have what we call the six years primary school. Mm-hmm. Then we have a junior secondary school for three years. Mm-hmm. Then you have a senior secondary school for three years as well. Mm-hmm. That university. Okay. Where in Kenya is eight. Well, before the before new. Their, uh, was, yeah. What's it called? CBC. The CBC. The CBC program. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which yeah. I find quite interesting. Yeah. So that that was the way it it actually moved. So. I come into Kenya, mm-hmm. I had only done one year in Ghana, mm-hmm. which was supposed to be equivalent of second year in Kenya. Okay. Right? So I thought I can go to Form 3 immediately, yeah. which was not the case. This is why I had to back yeah. back up a little bit. What are the money habits of, of Ghanaians, if I can sort of like generalize it like that? Are they, um, you know how people say, people from Nigeria like flamboyant mm. and, you know, so what are... What are... Ghanaians like to spend. Yeah. Yeah, but Ghanaians like to spend on people who matter to them. That's what I like. I would okay. say, we like to spend on our loved ones. We like to make sure they're very comfortable. Mm-hmm. We like to, and in the party scene, Ghanaians are very particular. Let me tell you something. Mm-hmm. If you are, for example, in Kenya, if you are in a club mm-hmm. as boys, yeah. three guys or four guys, and a lady walks to the table, one guy will get up and give the table to the lady, right? Mm-hmm. Or more ladies will come and then they'll be like, ah, you guys just come take over because yeah. you have an agenda. Yeah. Ghana, if men go out, yeah. they can say, nah, bro, <laughs> sis, you're not coming here. Yeah. And they like, put cash together yeah. <laughs> for that table. Yeah. They're and not going like, to let no. you come in and just sit down as a lady they don't know. Right. If they know you, fine. Yeah. But most of the time when men go there's out, no random... there's no random lady who just comes to the table. I've yeah. seen that so many times and I find quite, quite peculiar about the Ghanaians. Like, boys want to go out, let yeah. them go out. If they go get a girl to talk to somebody outside, that's fine. Yeah. But when they go out, the money that's spent for their drinks yeah. is for them. <laughs> Gosh. Okay. That's yeah. <laughs> but, they are, they, but they are also yeah. those guys who want to show a lady a really good, good time. time. Yeah. Most of my Ghanaian friends, if any, any lady who's going to Ghana, I always call them and say, hey, my friends are coming to yeah. Ghana. Treat them nicely. Mm-hmm. And some of them will go to the airport. And pick them up. Pick them up. Uh, and some of them, of course, being at the high place, they'll have they walk all the way inside the airport mm-hmm. just to make sure the lady is comfortable. Mm-hmm. Not there's an agenda, just to make sure. It's just like like um, what they call it, good, good habits. It's good habits. Yeah. So that's the thing. Good manners. It's good manners. Yeah. So yeah. that's the thing about wig and ends, and they'll spend on the lady. It's like, yeah. oh, do you want to? Like a few friends who've gone there recently, they've been giving cars to drive to the driver. Like, do you want a driver or you want to drive yourself? It's fine. At no cost, and no. No, exchange. no exchange. It's just how we can answer. Ah, okay. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Um, I want us to get into, I guess, your money journey, mm-hmm. right? And and you understanding um, money and revenue and all of that. Mm-hmm. Um, when do you think you first consciously understand um, money? Is it when you're still in Ghana or when you come here? When I was in Kenya. When you're in Kenya. So when, when you're in Ghana... Ghana Nah, Ghana was easy because, you know, parents are there. They send you money. You yeah. just kept on spending and everything. Yeah. And when it's finished, you ask for more. I came to Kenya, then I realized, like, man, things are more expensive in Kenya. Mm-hmm. When I came, still more expensive in Kenya than mm-hmm. Ghana. Okay. Then I started entrepreneurship. So as in, in St. Mary's, I used to sell DVDs. Um, I used to get softwares and I'll 
tell people if you want to buy i have a list of softwares almost mm-hmm. a thousand of them so by software what or, or by selling software I mean, cracked you software yeah. <laughs> it's illegal it was illegal at the time so i used to get it from underground websites yeah and i'll tell you you choose whatever you want then i'll go burn it on the dvd for you then you take it so mm-hmm. people wanted a crack version of a particular program mm-hmm. an audio 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 solution or whatever mm-hmm. it is i'll just sell it to them and i used to make quite a lot of money then yeah. i started selling movies so mm-hmm. New movies that I download, I download, I sell them. Um, I did that there for quite some time, mm-hmm. and then now I started a business also of getting to plant key loggers yeah. into the library uh, computer. So if your sp- if your girlfriend goes to use the internet there, I can tell you the password of your girlfriend. <laughs> That's good. Trust me, that was good money. <laughs> this is in St. Mays. It's, in it's a boys' school though. Yeah, but IB no, was, the IB was, uh, a, yeah. was, a, was so a, the girls, right? Guys, and there was only one computer in the library which had internet, <laughs> right? So everyone goes to use that same computer, right? Everybody could check. So you were email. telling insecure boys passwords to um, vice versa. Like, oh, 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 you know, yeah, yeah. they're yeah. like, I want to know my boyfriend what's what he, email what's he's he looking at. He, right. he sent to another girl. Yeah, at that time there was not a lot of chat. Yes, kind of, of course, it was so email, that was yeah. the easiest thing. Yeah, so I used to. I devised a, a way of being able to actually compress files onto a floppy disk. Mm-hmm. Then I delete it, copy it again, delete, copy, delete. Then I get home, I recover all of them. And, and what whatever. And what was your rate? What were you charging? Oh, it was a good buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Are you charging like a, a thousand bob a password? Because this is, um, what, 2000? Yeah, that's a long time ago. So at that time, yeah. like 500 shillings was a lot of money. Yeah, it was a lot of money. Yeah. yeah. You know, that gets served for a week. Yeah. You know, so I, I made some good money there. Then when I went to Daystar mm-hmm. was where I I started learning a lot, a little bit extra about money. Okay. And again, I was I was <laughs> so on campus you have mm-hmm. internet. Mm-hmm. Off campus you have to look for internet. internet. Yeah. So I had two ways. I became the person who was controlling the internet on campus as I was working for the school. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then I built what they call a repeater. So the repeater picks a signal from here mm-hmm. and then repeats it then all over. So mm-hmm. I bought repeaters. Mm-hmm. Um, I saved money to buy repeaters mm. all the way to. Uh, where, where, where did you save the money from? Is this again from the? No, for money that my, my dad used oh, to. Okay, right. To right. help me with. Yeah. So, pocket money while you university money. essentially. Yeah. Bought those repeaters, but also I used to repair computers. Okay. But the repair of computers, the way I want you to pay me is not money. You mm-hmm. buy me food. Okay. So either you buy me two <laughs> dinners, or you buy me soda. Is there a particular reason why you were going barter trade and not ah, money? It was easier. You, the customers always come back. If well, you it's money, money, they'll yeah. never come back. But you tell them, buy me something. Yeah. It's funny. They actually buy the food more than I have to give you the cash. Yeah. Because you can't even quantify how much you're really going to pay for my services. So, okay. It was an easier way. I saw that was a human thing. Yeah. People like to pay for things rather than give you Transact cash. Transacting. Yeah. The majority of them were friends. I was a very popular guy in school at okay. the time. <laughs> so, we did, I did that for some time. And then I started selling the internet off campus to other people. This is off of the repeaters, meaning you're yeah. getting the internet from the from school. school. Which, after that, they found out, they shut me out, and people still need the internet. Yeah. So, a friend of mine called Jade, uh, I'll not give you a second name. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, yeah. when the school found you out, did they fire you then from working for them? Or? Nah, they just said, you know, don't do it anymore and everything. <laughs> and then you see, that time, you only had a limited amount of people who can be on the internet. Right. So, I see the traffic of people who are right. either on pornography websites, and I'm like, you, you're not using the internet for anything yeah. useful, I kick you out. Mm, and I can add other people. Mm. So I used to regulate that. That was my job. So there were people at Daystar looking at pornography. You're human beings. <laughs> they're human beings. So I don't think it's they are actually with mean, the human beings. Right. Okay. So uh-huh. Jade and I we compromised one of the the networks, the telecommunication networks in Kenya. Okay. And they had a dongle. Mm-hmm. So we found a way, we reverse engineered the dongle to actually give us unlimited internet. Okay. So you, that became now my source internet, and the repeater was there, so broadcast to a lot of people. Yeah. That is still actually a business people are doing right now in mm-hmm. Kenya. I know a guy who, at JQuat, KU, and everything, mm-hmm. he resells internet mm-hmm. <laughs> to students, mm-hmm. which he buys and splits into small bits and then distributes and it. Distribute and they buy. So at this time, how much were you charging? Actually, you know, before before I even before I even go before we go further down this yeah. this 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 road, um, you seem to be building a lot of things. I mean, from the time that you were in Saint Mary's before yeah. that, like you're building. So where did that 
come from like where did you where did the the spirit the desire to be like yeah i want to i'm going to build things i'm going to figure things out on this just curiosity yeah i mean i was curious about a lot of things mm-hmm. uh and that got me into trouble i was arrested by interpol you were arrested by yeah, interpol right here on church road how how old were you when you were arrested by interpol what well i was what i think i can't remember how old i was but i was legal <laughs> you were legal legal enough to be arrested okay yeah because we hacked about uh, 200 about 300 facebook accounts um we set up a phishing page so a phishing mm-hmm. page basically mimics the whole facebook uh, page mm-hmm. and we set it up and give guys to log in and they logged in yeah it's still happening until today mm-hmm. a lot of phishing attacks goes uh, goes on um just the more sophisticated then we also there's an internet cafe at, at Surrey Center. I don't know if you remember called mm-hmm. Easy Surf. Mm-hmm. Those days, mm-hmm. that was the fastest internet connection we available at the time. At the time, at the time, we which we planted a software on our network, which every password that goes through the network goes through our computer first. Mm-hmm. So we dumped all of them. So we got PayPal accounts, which we use quite a number of them, mm-hmm. and then my pal called Zoheb went and stupidly published. All of that the password. information, the, yeah. not, not, the Facebook accounts on Facebook, and then blacked out part of it, which we know <laughs> if the password is John 2023 yeah. Yeah. or 2020, 2019, 2021, or yeah. something like that, you can figure it out easily. Yeah. So, that at that time, there was an operation going on about Google hacking okay. because we joined what we call an IRC chat room. Mm-hmm. Those days, uh, the WhatsApp of those days, or the Telegram of those days, yeah. where everybody's anonymous. And we were told to hack Google. We mm-hmm. didn't know what we're doing. You were just you're, so you were, to, you, were you, you were told to hack Google, or you're told we're to giving hack? the instructions, okay, of what to do. But you didn't know what platform that platform. We you didn't were. know it was Google that we were attacking. Okay, they gave us an IP address, but stupid enough, yeah, because we're script kiddies at the time. Mm-hmm. We just kept on trying out things and everything. So that got us in trouble because we were doing a worldwide arrest of people. Our friend in China, Suhan, was arrested. Um, as guys here, we're just taken for a short questioning, mm-hmm. not for long. So I ran away. <laughs> <laughs> so it's so like, did they stop you on the road? Was it as dramatic as it in the movies? So no, they came, not, not, not like, dramatic. we're here for you. Nah, um, you know. yeah, they came and just told us, look, they, luckily my parents were out of town. <laughs> I was going to be like, what are you going to folks? Yeah. They're out of town. I was taking somewhere in town, a few conversations, and then they let me go. But the curiosity to always try something new to yeah. see how things work out. And I, I'm a lazy person, so if I can do things <laughs> the easier way, fine. Like one of the jobs, yeah. which will come to that later, the reason why I left the job was because I scripted everything. Mm-hmm. So by the time I get to the office, the program runs and gives me all the results of what I needed to do. So I started getting bored. So curiosity and laziness are like the pivotal yeah. anchors of your, oh, trust your, me. <laughs> your productivity. It, it, yes. <laughs> And then that gives me more time to learn other things yeah. in, in this life. And um, the opportunities were there. Just the fact that I think as normal human beings, we don't try to take advantage of those opportunities. Yeah. So I used to learn how to fix computers and I would charge people for it, with, which is food. Um, I see the business opportunity for internet. There's a problem. There has to be a solution. Yeah. That's where my money journey started getting a little bit intensified. And I used to work for a company called Africa Harvest Biotech Foundation. Mm-hmm. Still and running. at that time when you were working, you're still in university. Yes. So, so at university, you're, you're running this um, side business, the, yes. the, the Wi-Fi internet distribution. Yes. You are working for Daystar. Yes. You're, and then you're working for this other company. Yes, which yeah. used to pay me 15000 a month. At that time. Really good money. Yeah. And I was still teaching Kung Fu. And you're teaching... <laughs> Okay, actually, there's another question I'd ask you before before we continue that, down that road, um, especially being, um, I guess, a foreigner, so to yeah. speak. Um, at what point does foreign exchange um, make sense to you? Or at what point are you conscious um, about the fact that different currencies, um, you know, can either be more money or less money, depending on which market, that you, which market you're in? That only started making sense to me after I went to South Korea. Okay. Yeah. So that's like way, way further down. Okay, so so we can down. get we can get we yeah. can get into that a bit later. All right. So what are you doing with this? With this so you have four revenue streams yes. by the time university. What are you doing with the money at that time? Um, I mean, I was trying to reinvest in mm-hmm. in like a, a longer baseband. Okay. To spread the internet further. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was using it to also, of, of course, living a good life in mm-hmm. school. I, I I think I really enjoyed my undergrad life. Yeah. So. 
beat parties, beat, I mean, the lifestyle was good. And also not to be too dependent on my parents. Because okay. that was a thing which every young person has been has been groomed to, depending yeah. on parents. So I started learning how to be not dependent on, dependent on my parents a very long time ago. Yeah. And, yeah. and what was your motivation for deciding um, the career path that you went down? Like, fundamentally, what, what was at the heart of it? I wanted to be a software developer, a programmer. Mm-hmm. But when I was in St. Mary's and I realized, like, wait, breaking things is easier than actually creating them. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's where, and I was not a good programmer at the mm-hmm. time. That was when I started getting so much into cybersecurity, um, the whole ethical hacking. So I used to read ethical hacking books like I was paid. Mm-hmm. When I'm walking to school, I'm mm-hmm. reading. When I'm in the li- in uh, I don't even go to the library. When I go for lunch, mm-hmm. I'm reading a page. Mm-hmm. When I'm free, I'm reading a page. And it's a thing that it just became second nature. Mm-hmm. Uh, I became the head of the, the chair for our what you call the data IT um, association, mm-hmm. and we used to have a lab where I used to go just hide in there and mm-hmm. read and try things things out. So the curiosity was just another thing for me, which I just knew this was the path that I really wanted to take. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so fast forward back to Daystar. So yeah. you get through Daystar. Do you get any other jobs? Are you working any other jobs at the point when you're Daystar? So I finished when I finished Daystar. Mm-hmm. I told Africa Harvest Biotech Foundation. Did somebody advertised a job mm-hmm. um, at Cellulant. Mm-hmm. At the time, I didn't know who Cellulant was. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, but before that, some there's a lady who offered me a job uh, to be a cybersecurity engineer. I w- my job was to break into one of the radio stations. I'm not mention which one, mm-hmm. which I hacked them completely, mm-hmm. you know, fully. Like it was such yeah. an easy job. Yeah. And I was supposed to get, she never paid me for it, <laughs> which was painful because I felt like the number of hours yeah. that I spent to do yeah. that, I could have actually made them a lot of money from doing, reading something else. Yeah. So I always match what the benefit will mean for me, mm-hmm. like money wise, mm-hmm. to exactly what it tasked me to be able to do. Mm-hmm. So she didn't pay me for it, and that was the first painful uh, experience of mm-hmm. being able to spend your time doing something and not being paid for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, fast forward later, I um, got to Cellulant. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually was uh, sorry. So now, even as you're doing this job, right? Are you? Would you say that you've honed your skills from what you've got at university, or from the general reading and experience? No, it's just that general you have. reading. Yes. Yeah. I mean, the university at the time, I I actually even change the curriculum <laughs> while you were in university when i was about to finish yeah i told that this this the curriculum has to change in terms of exactly how we we have to do things a little bit different mm-hmm. so if one day i become a lecturer which i am now mm-hmm. that has to change how we teach people mm-hmm. and about uh, cyber security or mm-hmm. technology or mm-hmm. whatever it is and um i did something interesting at daystar which mm-hmm was a way to prove to the lecturers that look we can do things better i mm-hmm. created four students mm-hmm. who don't exist mm-hmm. and they helped to moderate the grades mm-hmm. because does some teachers were favoring others mm-hmm. which i knew mm-hmm. some ladies of certain bodily features yes have been favored than everybody else yeah so now we're all gonna we're not gonna fail just because a teacher likes certain kind yeah. of people so i had to do that so you created four fake students they change all the time automatically yeah. and, and and the teachers were grading the students so when they grade yeah collectively yeah before the exams go, the results go out yeah the grades will moderate automatically automatically so if i get a 60 yeah. which i'm supposed to be below than the, the lower tire yeah i'll get about 65 i will not get 65 but they will not give 60 to a low tire hmm. so nobody has to fail yeah necessarily yeah yeah so were you showing them this once you were done no i was yeah when i did it and i finished i showed them <laughs> <laughs> it was a fun project come yeah. on <laughs> <laughs> okay so yeah. so you get to cellulant yes um what what's your entry position and what are you getting to cellulant as i got to cellulant as an intern as an intern yeah in fact i i, I wasn't sure i was gonna get that job because mm-hmm. they gave me two exams mm-hmm. uh the three exams one was linux operating system mm-hmm. The other one was so cybersecurity. Mm-hmm. The third one was databases. Mm-hmm. Database, I failed completely. Failed completely. Failed. Like I didn't even, I couldn't even type a command. <laughs> I didn't know anything. <laughs> uh, Linux, I yeah. knew a bit of Linux because of my experience of what I was learning. Mm-hmm. And cybersecurity, I aced it. Okay. So the day that I actually for, I went for graduation mm-hmm. in May, mm-hmm. that was the day I was being called and I've been told I've been accepted. I'm like, what? How? 
and they're like oh you're the first foreigner you're getting i'm like okay mm-hmm. And my first salary was at that time as an intern was thirty seven thousand Kenya shillings. Okay. Of which they were going to tax. Yeah, of course. So that's how I started learning about taxation because mm-hmm. I didn't know anything to do with the taxation. tax system. Yeah. And so how surprised were you when you got your I was, I was your like, what's it called the net income? Yeah, I was like, what the heck is this? You can't <laughs> give me this amount of money. You said you're gonna pay me thirty eight thousand Kenya yeah. shillings and then you give me the uh, my, 20, my twenty something yeah. I'm like it's not gonna take me anywhere yeah yeah then later after like six months i got confirmed mm-hmm. i became now a full-timer mm-hmm. uh was being offered seventy thousand kind of shillings okay so double but yeah at the time i didn't have a work permit so for okay. them to actually do a work because i was the first foreigner yeah in kenya to be hired yeah so for them to do a work permit for me they said they'll, they'll cover the cost halfway i cover the other cost okay so it was two hundred thousand at the time mm-hmm. um, for the work permit for the, for the year. work permit so they will take care of a hundred thousand and you do 100. the other hundred they'll take it they'll deduct ten thousand kenya shillings for my salary a every month. month okay so at the end of the day after the taxes you, you get you go home with like 30 something thousand mm-hmm. kenya shillings which was which is where i made another big mistake mm-hmm. that i think i'm now out of school i can spend i can show people are you living at home at this point yes i was living at, yeah. at home my so expenses were, are being catered for more yes which yeah. was a good thing yeah then but a mistake at the time which every young people every young person does which i always advise them please be wiser <laughs> now yeah. is going to expensive clubs <laughs> Brebistro, to be yeah. specific yeah. gong road those yeah. days yeah then you get there you think you know a pizza is 500 shillings yeah. so if you buy one buy one get one free on uh when was it was it happy Thursday. hours yeah fridays yeah yes fridays you get three jags three of you yeah. 1500 but you realize that the ladies come to pass by yeah you buy a bottle, glass of wine which is like almost 400 500 shillings another one and another one and then you're like crap my cash is finished yeah so before the month even gets to midway yeah you have, you have no money <laughs> so luckily yeah i lived a walking distance from <laughs> the from office the, okay <laughs> So, so you used to walk to work, I used to walk the to second work. half of the month. Yes. Either that or I had a discussion with the taxi drivers and around the area mm. that I'll pay you later or I pay them a bit of money, money at, at the, the beginning. beginning. Then now later they just like, they know I'll pay back yeah. at the end of the month. How, 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 how long do you do this routine for? Like how long does it take you to learn that you have, you know, you cannot keep living like this? Well, after the first, I think four months, four, mm-hmm. five months, I realized that this is becoming too expensive. But also the thing is we had moments where you know you have ladies you want to take out you're dating and mm-hmm. everything that dating life was quite expensive yeah man you go to a restaurant and those days you go to java yeah was, java was expensive uh, yeah but again i was used to java because of working when i was in daystar java was my place mm. and i was making enough money to be able to live that lifestyle yeah so so at this point have you then put the entrepreneurial stuff on the side yeah i put on the side um there i wanted to really focus to understand cyber security from a corporate perspective okay properly mm. um so did that for one year um a year eight months uh so the, after the first year i got a scholarship mm-hmm. in south korea mm-hmm. um so i started giving notice shortly because the process for the scholarship was freaking long okay took about eight months from the time you get the scholarship to the time you leave okay so in august is when i went to south korea okay that was 2012 Mm -hmm. yeah and that's where now my money life started right and that's where you say you also then understand the foreign currency foreign currency yes so uh, yeah my dad was uh, sent me money Mm -hmm. you know the u.s dollars you know i came with cash (laughs) so, uh, so at this point do you have any savings no that's the thing because you I spent you, all of that at, at, at Blue Bistro, Blue on, Bistro on, on and dating and, and, and everything. Yeah. So again, this was one of the biggest regre- regrets I think I've ever had, and yeah. the biggest lesson I ever tell anyone. Yeah, I spent those money trying to live a life thinking that, that you could not afford. Yeah, alcohol will never finish. Yeah, the days will never finish. <laughs> New restaurants will always come up. Yeah, and that that time, my dad kept on telling me to save, but I was not listening. Mm. my mom kept on telling me to say but so I was it like money. i'm not using your money so yeah whatever. no money yeah. you're not giving money anymore i'm working yeah. you know so that was a, one of the biggest mistake mistake number one mm-hmm. that i made of not saving when i was young mm-hmm. and you see where i used to think savings means putting aside a huge amount of money mm-hmm. that was a notion that i had of saving mm-hmm. not necessarily yeah so korea was where 
<laughs> everything became real and then yeah. just i'll not be raw I'm not and even be... before we get that i want to ask because yeah. you see your dad was sending you money so how so now you're getting from a point where you're not um taking any money from your dad um or your parents for that matter you're spending all your money albeit at blue bistro whatever it is so how difficult is it now to get him to agree to give you money it was not when you're going to conversation <laughs> to korea trust me yeah so you're like why have you saved i said nothing <laughs> I, have, I have zero the only cash i had was the exit money that That's, i was given yeah. my cellular gave quite yeah. an amount of money yeah to me say this is an exit we want to help you go to school right so it's really that means a very good working place yeah so the first day i landed in korea mm-hmm. i had two thousand dollars okay in my pocket but i've met a bunch of foreigners mm-hmm. who we all from different countries mm-hmm. that's another thing mm-hmm. different countries they have different, different rates but the thing is these guys had money and some of them came from programs where they're funded mm. so they've given me giving your scholarship was um, was free schooling mm-hmm. uh, but you pay for your accommodation okay. which was cheap actually yeah accommodation for three months for four months which is a term a semester was a thousand four hundred dollars okay which is quite fair yeah for a yeah. really nice yeah, that's f- four months is yeah then that night we went out um, we did two thousand dollars two thousand dollars yeah i went and spent that money the first one thousand dollars <laughs> i spent it in one night <laughs> which i have never done in my life but at that point you're not thinking because the guy i you went to one of the shops one yeah. of the, the 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 clubs yeah and the guy the owner of the club can say he'll change the money for me yeah which we converted the korean money looked a lot yeah so everywhere you're going you're just spending and buying so that first night in the morning i realized like i'm only i'm down to a thousand dollars and this is supposed to last me for the first one month yeah since it was a new country yeah and have you paid your rent at this point no th- that was paid already oh that was yeah. paid okay okay, okay. this is pocket money so okay. this is the first time you're uh, coming okay. to a country this yeah, is living like living, living expenses. expenses yeah so now i had a thousand dollars to to survive for the rest of the month 29 days yeah and that was just brutal <laughs> that was that was real brutal for me yeah i somewhat survived uh, but midweek mid of the month i just told my dad the cash is finished it's like what <laughs> This is where yeah. real entrepreneurship came in. Okay. Nothing. Does your dad send you money? Yeah, he did. He, he, he did because he, he, he realized that I, mean, I, was, in... I, made, I made mistakes. Yeah. You know, and I told him it would never happen again. But again, month two, same thing. <laughs> money was done. Month three, I was spending cash yeah. faster than I expected. And I'm like, I need to find. And what were you spending it on? He wanted food. Food and drinks. And Korea was such a place you needed to go out. You needed to go out. There's so much pressure when it comes to studying. So much. Like Korean Also studying. to decompress. To decompress, you need to go out. Yeah. You need to be able to get out there. And then they have a culture of eating outside. Mm. So whenever you go outside to eat, you're all contributing to that and mm. everything. Which um, became quite difficult for me to, um, to sustain that mm. life. So mm. I decided I needed extra money. Yeah. So I asked all the Africans, yeah. and like, what do you guys do for, <laughs> for extra <laughs> money over here? They're like, teach English. Mm-hmm. But according to the Korean law, mm-hmm. no African is supposed to teach English unless you have a South African passport. Okay, that's... So that was that was like, test number one. Yeah. So I did a lot of interviews. But I then... Very, some, of the, some, some Kenyans, actually. I was very connected to the Kenyan community mm-hmm. more than Ghanaians. Mm-hmm. Um, they connected me to one of the academies. They have small academies mm-hmm. than schools. Mm-hmm. So the academies connected me, and I interviewed. And I started teaching. So Man. how did you how did you bypass that the, the South African? Uh, you hide. You hide. <laughs> <laughs> you go teach. You go somewhere, yeah. and then you hide. Which was so that that was during the first holiday. Mm-hmm. So we came in August. Then whole the whole winter came mm-hmm. and everything. So after like almost six months, yeah. Excuse me. I'm going on holiday. So I started looking for those jobs. But before mm-hmm. I got that job, mm-hmm. I tried to work in a shoe factory. Mm-hmm. Like I was making shoes. You worked in a shoe factory? Yeah. Yeah. I did it for How, uh, they were paying about um about two two thousand five hundred bob Kenya shillings. A day. A night. A night. Yeah, because okay. you work at night, eight okay. to eight. And so I did it for twelve hour shift. Yeah. So I did the first night, you know. We did the first four hours, a friend of Michael Musa and I, they were like, ah, this is easy, yeah. you know. 
we went now to again another mistake of going to eat expensive food. <laughs> and let me tell you something: the way we have beef in Kenya, yeah. where everybody just has beef, beef. Yeah, beef is expensive in South Korea. Yeah, a small tiny beef will cost you like five thousand Kenya shillings. Yeah. So he took me to this beef place, which I did not know was really expensive, mm-hmm. and we couldn't pay. You you couldn't so pay. We couldn't pay. We didn't have the money. So, so we had to call people to send us cash to our uh, ATM uh, account to pay. So we had to, I went outside and then we draw the cash and came to pay. And I said, I'm never going to live that expensive life I've been living. Yeah, and we don't have money. And then that night we got fired. That <laughs> so now you're broke. Why, why, <laughs> why did you get, get fired? Guess what the reason was? was <laughs> We're too tall for the machine. Too tall for the machines. <laughs> Musa is my oh, height. so you're not so so you weren't as productive as as is Apparently. it like was it a productivity yeah. thing? Yeah, so they're like if we hire you full time, yeah, you will not you'll be slow. Your ROI is yeah, not going to be. Yeah, because us guys have to bend a little bit to, ah. to scrub the shoe and everything, <laughs> and I'm just they're like, come on, man. Yeah, it was fine. We could do, yeah. we could do the work. Yeah. So that I had to go look for another job. I started working in a rubber factory. Uh, and at this point, are you living hand to mouth? Yes. Essentially, your hand to mouth. Yeah. Mouth-mouth. And just see, it's just that your accommodation is paying is paid for paid but for by my dad now i moved to a hostel mm-hmm. outside of school mm-hmm. because the holiday i didn't want to stay inside and for me to be able to work i need to stay outside of school yeah. because the school has some rules about timing and everything yeah and then i got a hostel which said you can sleep in the hostel you have to work in a cafe they have mm-hmm. they had a school a cafe for teaching english and everything so i was working as a cafe manager mm-hmm. And that was the first management job I've ever had. Mm-hmm. Cause now I have to manage people. Yeah. I have to talk to them. I have to tell them do this, yeah. do that, move here. And then there are more a lot of travelers from so many countries. Mm-hmm. It was quite fun. Mm-hmm. But then I started another business there, mm-hmm. <laughs> which was party organizing. Party organizing. So I became a party organizer. Yeah. And I did everything. I I devised a way of being able to get people drunk. So devised the way. Yeah. To get I people read. Drunk. So there's a way you have to link alcohol and music. Mm-hmm. So when this, so I said, if you pay three thousand Kenya shillings, mm-hmm. you can drink all you can between uh, eight p.m. and twelve p.m. Okay, twelve midnight. Okay, but the thing is, the bottles we're using are cheap alcohol, mm-hmm. which happens everywhere. So mm-hmm. when they mix for you and everything, mm-hmm. we add a lot of extra, mm-hmm. which is gonna get you drunk. But by the time these are all, all the tequilas and mm-hmm. no, no, not tequila. I mean the vodkas mm-hmm. and the and the gins. Mm-hmm. But by nine thirty. Mm-hmm. We introduced I introduced jello shots, mm-hmm. which is what? Sugar. Yeah. But at that point, and then by nine forty five, almost ten, yeah, I increase the music. Mm-hmm. Which stimulates you to drink more. Yeah. So you can like, keep drinking more mm-hmm. and by eleven introduce more sugar mm-hmm. and you can't drink anymore. So essentially people are drinking for two hours. Yes. But they think uh, they're drinking the, for Yeah. For but the they time. have like we've paid for drinks unlimited. And they can't drink that good. much. Yeah. There's only so much they can drink. So yeah. that's and I read about the whole if you increase the music at a, even if you're in club right now yeah. you should listen to it mm. there's a way that when the music that's a point in time the music goes a bit louder yeah that's just to encourage you to actually drink to get another it's drink. a stimulant yeah so I did that I started racing frogs racing heels, frogs race yeah by 11 people I put I, I got a, a wooden uh, plaque yeah put this on the side and then drew I made them into yeah. four, uh, four quarters yeah so people place bets okay so the money is in the bet. Yes. Okay. So if you guys give money. Yeah. So I used to make almost like that will cost. I mean, the bet will come to a total of almost two or three hundred dollars mm-hmm. for the night. Mm-hmm. And I know a frog. <laughs> How do you get the frogs to get the other side? Uh, they'll keep on jumping. No, what was the motivation to get the frogs the other side? They'll keep on shouting. The oh, they shout at the yeah. frogs. And they... <laughs> but I, I built a cage for that. <laughs> so frogs, eels, crabs. Uh-huh. The crab race was quite interesting. So yeah. you hold the crab and then they're running, 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 running. Yeah. And then you go another round. Then the winner, uh, the winning, the person who actually win, they win as a team. Okay. There's a win. It's just a tequila bottle, which is really cheap. So you've paid to bet. Yeah. But you win um, a tequila bottle, which okay. I will encourage you to share with the, with the, the entire club. Right. We're not too many. Yeah. So everybody gets to share that shot. Yeah. So I guess shot glasses, we share the same tequila. Yeah. And then, so at that time, I've made almost ten thousand Kenya shillings. Yeah, in one night. In one night, give the the club owner, the the cafe owner, his his, his cash cut. as well. Yeah, it was a very nice exchange of foreigners and Koreans. Mm-hmm. It was a very good energy as well. Then from there, 
I take them to now the club club, mm. people club ghetto. Mm. Very mm. interesting place. Mm. And the club, I made an agreement that mm. I'll bring people. You give me free drinks. Mm. Free drinks. Give me uh, a table. Mm-hmm. So I had a table of my own, a mm-hmm. VIP table. Mm-hmm. I had got a bottle of Jägermeister, but of tequila, of uh, of absolute vodka, mm-hmm. and I bring a crowd. Mm. So I made a playlist for the club. Mm. When Kenyans are coming, I this is what is Kenyans. There's some Kikuyu music. Mm. It was fun. Yeah. So that's the business I was running. Yeah. Then at a point in time, I did a very interesting job where. Mm. After teaching English, mm-hmm. where they I did my contract ended for some time. And how much how much did they pay to teach? Well, teaching English was well, I used to make about two thousand dollars a month. Okay, thousand dollars a month. Yeah, which okay. was good. Yeah, and I did a very most unorthodox kind of job, mm-hmm. which was working in a in a sex toy factory. In a sex toy factory. Yeah, I was filling dildos. <laughs> <laughs> With what? So jolly. So there are different right. sections. There are guys yeah. in the electronic section. Yeah. Electronic dildos. Yeah. I was a feeler. Just this place, it feels. I pass it on. You pass it on the next guy. <laughs> the next guy goes to see. How long did you do that for? <laughs> All night. <laughs> but I did it for one day, and I said, "You know what? <laughs> this cannot be my life." <laughs> but that's where yeah. I realized, like, wait, why am I doing such jobs? So I started creating computer viruses. I used to create back in the day. Yes. Uh, I created computer viruses. I used to sell them in an underground market. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, but of course, on the side, I was writing papers. I was publishing papers, and then one of the one of one of the, some agency found mm-hmm. me and said, "Look, we want you to do research. We'll pay you for research. Mm-hmm. All you have to do is um, you do the research. We'll mm-hmm. pay you for it." And that became my extra source of income. Mm-hmm. These guys made me understand money mm-hmm. uh, extra mm-hmm. because they used to guess how much the guys used to pay me for one meeting. Mm-hmm. If you're if you're Let's see. If you're saying that you were getting two thousand dollars for the in- for teaching for teaching English, that's for a month. That's for a month. But this guy was paying me five hundred dollars for one sitting. For one sitting, and in that sitting, you're just exchanging ideas. Yeah. So I tell him, look, I've read about ABCD. Mm-hmm. He tells me, oh, there's a conference you're going. For. There's a. I tell him the conferences that are coming. Mm-hmm. He pays me for the conferences, mm-hmm. pay for my accommodation, mm-hmm. gives me money, for and just ask you to get go insight get information, and data from. insights. What are people thinking? What are people researching? That's and I'm like, wait. So knowledge is actually that expensive. Yeah. Intelligence is expensive. Yeah. This guy I just want to know what other people are doing in yeah. research. What are the topics of presentation? What are people discussing? And I'm like, this is not a bad idea. I are mean, you still com- uh, creating computer viruses at this point? Yes, I was still creating. <laughs> what are your ethics around creating computer people viruses? People want to buy. There's always a buyer. <laughs> <laughs> so there's no so for you at that point in time there's no right or wrong no no no, no. Sort of it's, and it, i was not doing really malicious stuff with it yeah it's it's basically whoever wants to use it somebody will always buy yeah but I got the point i started doing more research than creating computer okay. viruses and everything right. so still living hand to mouth at this point um sometimes yes mm-hmm. because the lifestyle has to continue oh so- <laughs> <laughs> so at this and point, it's Korea, at this know. point, you're still at a pretty expensive lifestyle. Yes, but um, Korea is expensive, so okay. it it took it took time for me to be able to adjust to that lifestyle. Okay. Yeah, it 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 really took me a long time, and the thing is, I stopped asking my dad for money. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. So also that income stream also still, is not exactly. there. Exactly. Okay. So right. I'm like, don't send me money. But when things get really you bad, know, that, you know. the job changes and everything, mm. then I can ask for money. Mm. Um, so that that happened for a while. So uh, savings is still savings was still not there. Still non-existent. Still non-existent. Okay. So and then sometimes you know again I was being stupid enough to try to do a dating long distance dating life. Okay. So I guess sponsoring so someone here, <laughs> <laughs> dude, that was expensive. Buying yeah. flowers remotely. Yeah, it was not, <laughs> it was it was not, not easy. Yeah, it was not easy. And that went on for some time, and I mean, I finished my masters. Uh, unfortunately, I overdid my credits. Okay. So instead of 20, 28 credits, I did forty two. So that's that's not overdoing. That's like something. That's almost double. I was I was just curious about mm-hmm. classes and things. People are doing amazing things in other units. I'm like, I need to learn how business mm-hmm. are working, and I wanted to be an overall cybersecurity tech bro. <laughs> how do you how I know mean, now as you're talking about all these things? I mean, you're saying you're doing forty eight credits as opposed to to twenty six, is it? Yeah. How instead of twenty four, I did forty two. Twenty four, you do forty two. How are you reconciling? How do you reconcile the fact that you say you're lazy? lazy because well i like shortcuts 
to things. <laughs> yeah. And I knew eventually yeah. that's going to save me from a lot of things in the future. Okay. okay. <laughs> that was my idea anyway. Yeah. That I want to be so knowledgeable in every part of tech mm -hmm. that even if I'm not the expert, I will be able to answer. Okay. So I was learning things about GSM. I was learning things about uh, machine learning. Mm -hmm. I did a class on... Um, on the AI and everything, and, mm -hmm. and the, the exam was one line. Mm -hmm. We have to explain a robot moving in a box mathematically, which was things I never ever thought I'd ever do, mm -hmm. you know. So I finished, I came back to Kenya, mm -hmm. I sold everything by the way. I um, said, Look, I'm done with school. My speeches can be later in the mm -hmm. future. I landed here, my dad was like, You're going back. He called my professor, he's like, This guy is coming back um, to Kenya, to Korea, to do his PhD. So immediately I applied for a scholarship. I got it again. Mm -hmm. So I went back. But by that time, you know, I only spent one year on campus. Mm -hmm. All the rest of the time you, yeah, was you were off right, campus. Right. So pay for that rent, pay for food and everything was all my side gigs. Yeah. Um, at a point in time, I worked at, at the Samsung factory. Mm -hmm. Worked at the LG factory. Mm -hmm. I was making TV stands and, and microwave knobs. And I did, by those things I do for like three days, I'm like, nah, this can't be my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, but a yeah. teaching of English yeah. was and intermittent. Yeah, yeah, and then also oh, the contracts would keep coming every so. Yeah, long. every every now and then they're like, oh, I even did a, I did work as being a father Christmas. Santa like Claus. you put on the Santa yeah. Claus suit at a mall or like bro. At a, yeah, I used to beatbox on the streets. I used to play drums on the street. I used to dance. I used to do street battle of dancing. So you did anything you possibly could. Anything to, to, to that raise. could make that extra cash. Yeah. I used to win blow dryers for my hair. <laughs> like, I don't have hair, but guys, guys, we used to win anything and yeah. everything, and yeah. we sell it. Yeah. Now, so my entrepreneurship skills have always been there. Anything yeah. that I can do to make that extra money. What was but the drive at that point was survival. It was survival. So survival, but yeah. also learning mm -hmm. things that they see. Koreans are doing that as an everyday mm. lifestyle. Why can't we do it? I don't see that happening in Kenya. Mm -hmm. That a university student who is in Daystar, mm -hmm. who is considered prestigious, mm -hmm. doesn't want to be seen in a restaurant. But I was in a restaurant, I was a bartender mm -hmm. at a point in time. Mm -hmm. You know, why can't we do the same thing? And they do it so casually. Mm -hmm. If you see every convenience store that people are selling things, they're students. Yeah. And a student is studying at the same time selling. Yeah. Studying and studying the whole night. Yeah. We don't do we don't have that kind of a culture here yeah here you do you you go to sell in a store it's like you're degrading not, yourself yeah, and yeah. you're like but there they're like we need to make they need to that make extra, the extra money yeah but finishing the phd i finished the phd in two years because of the extra, the extra credits. credits okay and instead of doing six uh, so now i only had to do 30 credits mm -hmm. for phd mm -hmm. instead of doing th uh, six credits per semester mm -hmm. no three credits per semester maximum i did 10. Mm. so one and a half years I you finished the, the PhD course I knew what I wanted to write about so I started mm. writing about that way before mm. uh, excuse me came back to Kenya do res did research took the results back finished all of that now came back to Kenya yeah but before coming back I started applying for jobs okay Most so at this time you're 20 28, 28. 28. so 28 you're coming back yeah um, savings are little to none still little to none uh, yeah. But you have a PhD. I had a PhD. You have work experience. Well, well, I was overqualified. Yeah, and experienced in a, in in a typical corporate world. Yes. So a lot and of and a job, threat for anyone who exactly be so hired. most jobs yeah. don't want to hire you. Yeah. I got a job offer in Abu Dhabi, mm -hmm. uh, which was gonna be sixteen thousand dollars a month, mm -hmm. and I couldn't get it. They're like, we can't. I we can't keep you for long. You know you will leave yeah eventually so there's no so yeah. there's no point of hiring you yeah. when you're gonna leave in a year mm. and i'm like come on i'll stay for five years they're like, <laughs> <laughs> they're like nope sixteen thousand yeah. dollars at that time i thought sixteen thousand dollars was a lot of money yeah because that's that equates to over a hundred that's one point yeah that's 1.8 million yeah or what 1.8 1.9 million kenya shillings yeah and i was 28 yeah that's gonna be a lot of money yeah. but and i passed all the exams that's yeah a funny thing so that wasn't working and i applied back to cellulant mm -hmm. and I, a tougher exam mm -hmm. i came back as a head of cyber security mm -hmm. uh, but even all the years when i was in south korea whenever i come back to kenya i was still working for cellulant uh you're touching basically yeah so yeah. i come back and work for a few months and i go back yeah. come back work for a few months so i had that whole not i built yeah. a whole new team before i even went back mm. my phd so i came back uh became the head of cyber security did it for one year 
and this is now where my life changed okay went to internet solutions okay who, sorry so when you're yeah. coming back to cellulant as a head of cyber security what kind of range of, of, of salary are we talking at that so at that time i was making three hundred thousand Kenyan shillings that uh gross gross okay and i was like ah i can move out yeah <laughs> why not <laughs> yeah so after the first three months i told my parents i'm out it's out yeah, I, I said, I'm and out. what yeah what's your lifestyle then at that point have you <laughs> hey now this is where i was like wait i started for so long yeah it's about time <laughs> let me enjoy you know i just see all my guys all my friends yeah. driving cars yeah. and everything thing and and that was just a whole different lifestyle so yeah. i was living on riverside mm-hmm. paying about i was paying rent for sixty thousand kind mm-hmm. of shillings uh, but that's where my eyes opened to join the circle mm-hmm. so my dad really forced me to join the circle mm-hmm. called kanisa circle mm-hmm. so i started putting small money you know mm-hmm. five thousand kenya shillings drop it there two thousand drop it there mm-hmm. every other month but a lot more money was going to an expensive entertainment lifestyle yeah. than than um, than that. Uh, There's even a, a, an app, some Nigerian app, which I downloaded some time back, mm-hmm. just to track my expenses and everything. And I was like, a lot of cash is going to food and entertainment. entertainment. But because I was working so freaking hard, mm-hmm. that I don't have time to. I don't have time to cook. Yeah. But my mom also know, was know, was living in Raptor Road, so Riverside Raptor Road, just, pick, just yeah. pick, pick food and eat once in a while. But again, I get home late junking a lot of of, of the time mm. it people don't know that becomes really expensive mm. small, when, small, when really small costs yeah. add up yeah then again the most expensive thing any man will go through which i keep on telling people <laughs> dating you go on a date yeah. five thousand ten thousand gone. gone you know and you go out to drink after that twenty thousand gone in a weekend you're spending almost thirty thousand kenya shillings yeah every weekend yeah. on drinks yeah you know the next thing you know, how much are you really making? If yeah. you're making three hundred thousand Kenya shillings, that'll come to about two to twenty. Yeah, to twenty, sixty thousand Kenya shillings to to rent. <laughs> to rent, they have to pay a leg, yeah. internet. So when you have about a hundred and twenty k left or and everything, of but which, I had a yeah, which was going, but I had a habit which I started. I give I give my mom part of my cash okay. every month, mm-hmm. not to save, just to appreciate her. Okay, I do that. Every, I religiously do that till today. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. Um, and I'm like, I'm living hand to mouth. So if end of the month salary does not come on time, you're in trouble. I'll be in trouble. Yeah. But but then you have the circle where you're putting little yes, little, little bits of little money. bit of money. Okay. Um yeah. So after one year yeah. of living there is where there's a guy called Vimal. Mm-hmm. Uh when I met I met a cellulant. Mm-hmm. I became the head of cybersecurity mm-hmm. for cellulant as a business. Mm-hmm. Now I have to be an entrepreneur and start a business as a department. Mm. I have to hire people, mm-hmm. which was easy for me, but I have to understand the numbers. Mm. So I've been told the, the PNL sheet. Yeah, PNL, ACV, MRR. I'm just like, what are these terms? Like yeah. I don't understand. Yeah. But the guy Vimal schooled me on how to calculate margins, how mm. to calculate um, commissions, how to calculate all of those. Mm. And I'm like, hmm. I can make a lot of money if I just sell to the right person. Mm-hmm. I can make a lot of money if I just get to calculate my right commission. Mm-hmm. I can make a lot of money if I partner with the right salesperson mm-hmm. internally mm-hmm. who we can split the commission. The commission. Yeah. And how we're gonna split the commission. The, so the, all that math now became started making sense and I'm mm-hmm. like, okay. So cars that I've been put in the circle mm-hmm. got to a point where I could now buy a car. Okay. Um so bought my first but again, I did. I was still doing side gigs. Yeah. Um, I started working for a company in the UK mm-hmm. um, where I was doing policies. So, I, so one of the biggest airlines, I was on who did their policies for them. Their their cybersecurity cyber security policy. cybersecurity policies, which yeah. I feel so proud of. I just can't mention the name. name. <laughs> I'll tell you after. <laughs> yeah. So it was such a that was the biggest job I've ever yeah. done, and I did a few presentations. Yeah. And I, so I I do a lot of presentations, mm-hmm. cybersecurity talks. And again, I didn't understand one word which I think we all misalign mm-hmm. when it comes to even getting payment for things, mm-hmm. value. Mm-hmm. I used to charge 20,000 Kenya shillings mm-hmm. to do a presentation. Mm-hmm. Just to do a presentation, to do a presentation. around. Yeah. Then a company, one of the companies that I went to uh, were called Mimecast. Mimecast mm-hmm. was doing a presentation and I said, guys, you're salespeople. Mm-hmm. You're not bringing out the, the proper details of this product. Mm-hmm. Let me do it for you. Mm-hmm. They're like, yeah, can you just give us a demo? I showed them a demo and I gave them a flow of how things are. They're like, can you come to South Africa and do the same presentation for us? I'm mm-hmm. like, 
yeah they're like how much would you charge i said you give me what you, what you want mm-hmm. that's mistake number one mm-hmm. but the guys gave me a contract mm-hmm. guess how much they pay me a thousand dollars per presentation for that presentation they're like we'll take care of your flight mm-hmm. business class we'll take care of your accommodation mm-hmm. in a hotel where the present the conference will be and drink and eat whatever you want mm-hmm. at any time mm-hmm. on them mm-hmm. and you'll still give me a thousand dollars that's when i'm like wait I could actually make a lot of money speaking about what is in my head yeah that became now my side gig so you're going to so so this is how this develops you're going to different conferences talking about cyber security yes. essentially yeah and people are paying you to come to their conferences and, yeah and educate them on which i still do till today yeah. so a lot of times even most of the things that i do in terms of presentations is what gives me the extra money mm-hmm. which i said i can use those money for spending mm-hmm. but everything else goes to savings yeah so i started learning about the whole savings i my cash in circle i was able to get a small loan mm-hmm. i didn't want to take it for too long yeah bought my first car yeah um i paid back that loan in two months because mm-hmm. <laughs> now yeah. i had two yeah. other jobs i that, mean that i had side working. businesses yeah. um and i'm like this is the power of the circle yeah right so at that time of course the whole the notion about money markets mm-hmm. started coming in a lot I said look i don't trust all of these insurance companies yeah um that are, are there yeah. but i need to make sure that i can still make money so that business i um how do you call it i kept on doing that for some time yeah S- presentations um, and how are you finding your your clients to be able to make these presentations so the more i go for those conferences mm-hmm. i know how to be able to have conversations with them with them and with somebody sees you they're like hmm. How come we never thought about this? Can mm-hmm. you come educate our people of cybersecurity? Mm-hmm. I go, and I was undercharging as well. Mm-hmm. Even, at thousand, them, even at a thousand, even at a thousand dollars, you still. For some of them were three hundred dollars, others are five hundred dollars, mm-hmm. and then I'm like, why not? So that became quite a, a business model yeah. that I was doing for a very long time. Yeah, but I made that I declared that at, at Internet Solutions yeah. that they I um, get to do side gigs people yeah. call me and they're not the client of internet solutions yeah. so you should understand yeah um they now started <laughs> and when you move when you move now to internet solutions have they increased your salary have they yeah, increased they your offer yeah, yeah they did by they what did. percentage you can talk percentages mm, by almost uh 100 percent almost 100 percent. so yeah. almost double okay almost double. yeah okay almost double but the benefits were better okay yeah they had huge benefits mm-hmm then and at this point in time you're still living on your own living on my own expenses are still the same so they're still the same yeah. but now at least now i put cash into, into my circle matches. which i was <laughs> like i need to just put some yeah. cash there yeah until i started dating somebody who i knew i was gonna get married to okay and we decided to get a baby yeah that's where <laughs> <laughs> real financial education came in yeah yeah Cause I'm like it's not me anymore. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there's another human being on the way, mm-hmm. and that's my wife to mm-hmm. be. Um, so now I have to start re-strategizing. Mm-hmm. So I started putting money in uh, an education fund. Okay. For my daughter before she even gets to be born. Mm-hmm. So I put in half a million every year mm-hmm. uh, in the APSA. Mm-hmm. Um, and I knew the returns will come, will come much later. Yeah. Um, then I put a little bit of cash in money markets as well. Mm-hmm but the main focus was that kind of a thing but he, again at that point i had to move houses where i was staying because, yeah uh, it was a two-bedroom house but in a basement somewhere mm-hmm. um moved to raptor road mm-hmm. and that cost was twice twice the amount of of, of rent mm-hmm. twice expenses twice of everything mm-hmm. meaning i need more sources of income yeah and i'm like i need to set up a company because i'm always charging as bright yeah so that five percent gets to be taken away and I made mean, it just quite difficult trying to balance all of those kind yeah. of um of uh, how do you call it of a life yeah but my my party life reduced significantly mm-hmm. uh focus became uh more family and everything so when the family is there you yeah. need to look for extra in cash yeah one way or the other yeah <laughs> and that's a motivation for so and at this point you had two two other revenue streams um there's a main job yes and there's the presentations the presentations and people started asking for security assessments okay which i do for them as well okay which actually used to generate a lot more cash because mm-hmm. one security assessment can go for half a million 
one security assessment how yeah. long would that take mm, about a week mm-hmm. or two max mm-hmm. yeah and you're doing it all on your own so there's nobody else that you're paying no. there's no one that's just you on your own just me okay which was good money yeah so yeah that sounds like it then later i realized i started getting stretched thing mm-hmm. i can't be everywhere yeah so i started now consult having consultants mm-hmm. that you come in you will do part of the work but i will pay you mm-hmm. an amount of money that we agree on from the beginning okay yeah okay so at that point your three sources of income yeah family is now coming together so you're saying you're investing in your daughter's education policy yes money market funds yes are you still putting money in the sacco sacco yes you still put money in the sacco money there. okay yeah and then you still have a bit of money to i guess spend on, on spend and everything yeah. and i'm like i need to live a little as yeah. well you know yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then but life changes of things of so my car needs to change yeah. it was becoming too expensive and I, look a bmw was 320i was such an expensive car to maintain yeah you're spending yeah, almost the on the flatbeds flatbeds yeah and I, i'm like <laughs> so i got to a point i had to wake up and i was like guys i can't be spending almost fifty thousand kenya shillings mm-hmm. to a hundred thousand kenya shillings a month just fixing this car. this car and it was so low if i carry three people that's it yeah and i think even <laughs> and let me tell you something i yeah. think my mechanic even jinxed me yeah <laughs> because every time i drive to go to langata road yeah. i had to park the car at his garage Something <laughs> always happens between the Bagathi <laughs> and the mechanic. Yeah. <laughs> so I used to park the car at his garage yeah. every now and then. Yeah. Then he tells me 50k, 80k, mm-hmm. 100k. And I'm like, this cannot be the life. Yeah. So I took cash from the Sacco, mm-hmm. sold the BMW, yeah. took the car, cash from the Sacco three times. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, it took about twice. No? Was it? Okay, and it's an amount. Yeah. And bought a Prado. Mm-hmm. And that became much easier to maintain. Yeah, cheaper to maintain. Services were cheaper. Parts were cheaper. Yeah, um, which I tell everybody: get a car that you can maintain. Don't yeah. get the flashy lifestyle yeah. kind of car where it becomes quite difficult for you to use. Yeah. So that actually reduced my my, my your, expenditure. Your, yeah. By far. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's a family car as well. Mm. So you'll be able to know. Uh, yeah, I was able to actually live. Kids. Yeah. It became a much easier yeah. lifestyle for me and yeah so i stayed at internet solutions which merged with dimension data mm-hmm. um then i left dimension mm-hmm. data after a year and a half when they merged mm-hmm. so i was there for like four years mm-hmm. they got into another job where again salary went the increment about it became now quite a significant amount yeah and that that job didn't stay for too long mm-hmm. for, for some differences mm-hmm. Uh, but again, that's when I was like, hmm, you know what? I need to understand the value of who I am exactly. Yeah. But so there was that job, which was paying pretty well. Mm-hmm. I had extra sources of income, mm-hmm. but all of that time I was going through a marriage mm-hmm. detail. Mm-hmm. So a lot of cash went was into, into <laughs> getting the marriage, into getting the marriage, you know, your the processes, shows, the yeah. processes the it was expensive, mm-hmm. really expensive. So after that, we had to do a wedding right after. Mm-hmm. Again, weddings are not cheap. <laughs> yes. The budget that we had for a wedding, yeah. it went double. Then, so what you ended up spending was double what you double had what we had. So later I look at it, I'm like, wait, the amount of money that I spent in those three years, mm-hmm. I never knew I could actually make that much money. Mm. I never knew I could actually make, generate that much Millions income. Of millions of revenue, yeah. So it just needs a better way of planning mm-hmm. to be able to do the same thing. Yeah. So I literally just, and then, for the fact that the job that I was in was not paying on time, mm-hmm. it distorts everything. Mm-hmm. So if it does, the cash doesn't come in at the month, yeah. it's over to the next month. Then also, I also had a credit card, mm-hmm. which was saving me a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of people hate credit cards, mm-hmm. but I think to me, For it you, comes they through. Yeah. Um, if only you know the percentages to pay back yeah. <laughs> <laughs> properly. Yeah, yeah. And I used to make a mistake of paying back everything automatically. Mm-hmm instead of waiting for the credit card to debit mm, mm. and i used to say I, I i used to do a debit of 100 percent yeah um instead of doing a debit of 50 percent. okay so the credit practically card, practically what difference does that make it does make the difference of when they have to take and the the, the time span that they have to take to have to debit your card okay so the credit card really helped me for the moments where i don't have money mm-hmm. i don't want to ask my wife for <laughs> for, money. for money yeah. for my savings I didn't want to touch the circle. I said, mm-hmm. I'm never going back to the circle to take cash from it. Okay. 
uh, it should be for an emergency, like if worse come to worse. Yeah. So I was still. And then there's an the education policy which education policy that I've never touched. Yeah. That it's it's locked. Yeah. I even told them never. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> no matter if I no call you, what, just don't. Never yeah. because. Yeah. It takes about three or four years before you can even start making profit ah, out of it. Okay. So if you take it out early, yeah, you're making a loss. Yeah. So that is there. The money markets, I kind of took a pause mm-hmm. because the income stream was not fluent. Yeah. Um, but I got another job mm-hmm. later, which cash is coming in on time. Mm-hmm. I'm able to do my, um, my my other businesses and i registered a company mm-hmm. which was able to actually now get proper jobs which yeah. is a big difference mm-hmm. that when you have a company they pay you better than as an individual, than as individual yeah so i got on a security assessment which will cost nine hundred thousand mm-hmm. Kenyan shillings um, so you can do in in the company's name you can charge nine hundred thousand shillings in your name you charge half a million yes okay. or less but now i charge almost a million there's one which have 1.2 mm-hmm. million mm-hmm. and i make a decision of 30 percent or 20 percent depending on how much it is mm-hmm. stays in the company mm-hmm. for operational expenses mm-hmm. the other bits i take a bit for myself yeah and i pay the people the who people. are also part of it yeah um and it's everybody goes home happy yeah in that case but i'm doing that in a way to be able to actually build the profile of the company yeah so that's how it has been so far. Yeah. Yeah. And I make sure it doesn't interfere with my nine to five. Yeah. Uh, and as well, I've invested some of those cash into other businesses. Mm. So I'm part of an ed tech company. Mm-hmm. Um, and investment, some people think an investment needs to be cash. Yeah. Investment can also be time. Yeah. So get an equity in a company and I spend time to be able to restructure or do things and work for that company. Yeah. Um, did that for some time. And then the other bit, which is so, there's a few companies that I do that for, mm-hmm. and then some people just want to consult you. Mm-hmm. Typical example: um, just two days ago, as a person who said, "I need you for three months. Mm-hmm. You just come help me structure the future of what we're gonna build." Mm-hmm. They're good already. Mm-hmm. They're really good. Has an amazing team. Not that he doesn't trust his team. Mm-hmm. He just wants a different set of eyes, and that's a good sources of income, yeah. <laughs> you know. And then also, also I lecture at Strathmore. Yeah. Um, which every semester I teach as a, a one a course, of, yeah, just one actually one course, mm-hmm. but they have different uh, number of hours. Okay, so that is what I use to translate into my rent. Okay, so this uh, this uh, Strathmore part time lecturing is what's paying your rent. It's what pays my rent. Yeah, because uh, most of the courses are about sixty hours, okay. which is a good amount of money. Yeah, but the ones that are shorter don't mm-hmm. pay too much. Mm. But I calculate it in the sense of that should be my rent money not mm-hmm. <laughs> my mm-hmm. salary should not yeah. pay yeah. so if i use my salary mm-hmm. or any other kind of business money to pay rent yeah that will cover yeah, for it later when they pay because they don't pay immediately yeah they pay at the end they of pay the, uh, at the end uh, of the, the semester next, at the end of the end of the semester an extra month uh, well, if you started the okay, next so after course you've done, after you finish the semester you give them all the details yeah they process the invoice then pay yes. a month after so that. that kind of okay. spreads out for my yeah so that's basically how i've been doing yeah. my so that's like what four four five different um revenue streams right now because yeah. part-time lecturing yeah nine to five job the company um and then the consulting yeah and the consulting okay. goes beyond kenya yeah because some people consult from from france mm-hmm. from ghana from uk and that's one which i learned a very important lesson from a very good um, um how do you call it oil engineer mm-hmm. he charges Per, sec, per, per minute, for every minute you call him, yeah. he charges for that. So he has a satellite phone, yeah. has a normal phone for the yeah. country, it has a remote phone. Yeah. So if you can be on a flight, you'll call him, you'll get him. And, but he'll charge you for he'll it. He'll charge you for it. Because he's the kind of guy who knew, a guy was making, I think, uh, $70,000 a month. Tax free. I know, working as his working as- And if he leaves that job, yeah. you can only hire him after two years. Of which the company which has either he's left, yeah. you have to pay him an amount, amount for, that. for that two, <laughs> for that years. two years. You have to keep it a month yeah. because he's so valuable and his knowledge, yeah. the value he has yeah. is that you can't afford to let him to let him. another company. Yeah. That's how he used to be. Yeah. So he will pay him so a that monthly. Was your, that's your as, uh, aspiration. Yeah. yeah. So the, he, he, he sat me down. The guy taught me this thing. Mm-hmm. And that was the first time I ever, first and last I ever rode in La Lamborghini. Yeah. <laughs> in his in, Lamborghini. In La, his yeah. Lamborghini in South yeah. Korea. He paid a taxi guy who brought me to his the island where he was mm-hmm. to stay for the whole time. Yeah. And took me back. And I was just like, how do you make that much money? So later I, I tried that with someone. Mm-hmm. I said, 
look, if you ever call me for an advice, even via WhatsApp, you yeah. don't pay for it. Yeah. And this guy said they pay me 60 euros for every call. For every, for, for every for every 30 minutes he yeah. calls. So if you call me for 10 minutes, So you have a timesheet essentially? Yeah. If you, if And then if I do jobs for him, um, every hour, I calculate the number of hours, every hour was 50 euros. Yeah. And I tell him I've spent 10 hours doing this job. Yeah. So times 50 euros. And he pays. So I started learning that concept. I'm like, hmm, that's not a bad idea. Yeah. Incident response, people have to make smart decisions yeah. very quickly. And if you are valuable enough to be able to actually give that knowledge to that person to yeah. stop something from happening, yeah. they'll, pay you, they'll pay you for it. As we wrap up, because this has been quite the story, I think. Yeah. yeah just hearing, I mean, it worked, worked from, from essentially shoe factory to <laughs> <laughs> all sorts of unspeakable places. But pole um, dancing. Pole, oh, pole dancing yeah. as well. Oh, goodness. <laughs> anyway, so what's, what's, what's one lesson that um, I guess you can, you can share um, when it comes to um your ability to make money um and what you've learned so i'll start with the biggest regret yeah was not starting to save early okay. enough i think i had the ability to mm-hmm. and there's never enough that you can ever save yeah yeah i wish i started those tiny 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 savings but my biggest lesson is is two things um when i got an assistant mm-hmm. my life became completely different Mm -hmm. because I there's a day I forgot a client's proposal Mm -hmm. for Mm $3,500 I forgot like completely forgot I forgot completely forgot and to be honest it slipped my mind easiest job to do Mm -hmm. but it completely slipped my mind because I was the one with the proposal I am to get to do the invoice I have to do the presentation then I have to do the job as well and I still had a 9 to 5 so I said no this is Mm -hmm. not gonna go on like this and I got an assistant who manages my life Mm -hmm. even now people meeting me sometimes Mm -hmm. he gets to book those meetings Mm -hmm. structure me and everything we got some tools called we got a tool called notion Mm -hmm. every documentation of meetings what timings Mm -hmm. where i'm going so i know even if i forget something Mm -hmm. he knows to be able to jump in Mm -hmm. for me if it's an Mm -hmm. online meeting Mm -hmm. saying i'll be there right now or just to communicate yeah that made me to actually have more time to be able to look for other avenues of, mm-hmm. of stream of, of income streams mm-hmm. and also collaboration mm-hmm. before i want to do everything because i can keep all the cash yeah for myself yeah and i'm like no but if i spend a whole week doing this job do the security assessment do the presentation details and reporting and i made three thousand five hundred dollars i can't take another client i can't mm-hmm. do anything else mm-hmm. so i started now distributing to other people yeah you know so i said look you are really good at this come in do it and i'll be able to pay for this yeah. or better yet my assistant can do most, most of the jobs as well yeah yeah <laughs> so i pay him extra for now for, those... for the extra jobs that we yeah. do yeah apart from my normal rate yeah. with him of yeah. being my my executive assistant yeah. so collaboration it really helps mm-hmm. there's some companies that i get to work with and i said i can't do this job can i give it to you mm-hmm. and they take it and they get it done and i get my commission from mm-hmm. there so collaborating with people is the easiest way to be able to actually make money mm-hmm. people think just doing it all by yourself is the easiest way you're not yeah. going to and also getting people who can assist you that's another very easy way of being able to make sure that you can you can get to generate multiple yeah. sources of income and last but not least you have to keep on studying something new yeah the things that i'm doing today yeah another kid will come do it tomorrow yeah exactly the same way yeah. if not better so you have to keep you have to keep reading and keep trying something new yeah um yeah see before i was just a guy who used to do presentations yeah. now i'll tell you i'll do a presentation and i'll consult you um at a point in time i started doing influencer marketing yeah so tech companies come to kenya they want to get me for and to, to to be a thought leader mm-hmm. uh, for a particular product. Yeah, I said I can do that for you, but I can also help you structure how Touching. to get into the market. Yeah, that's another inc- that's another extra source of income. They're yeah. like, okay, we never thought about that. Yeah, instead of hiring a a, comp- a marketing company to go get all the details for you, you pay me. I will tell you where to sell and where not to sell and yeah. where to how to strategize. Yeah, yeah. So okay. I, I start looking for new ways. Learning, ma- I had to learn marketing. Yeah. I had to learn data science. I had to learn sales. Yeah. And as I watch YouTube videos, Udemy at classes to understand the sales processes. I follow very interesting people on online yeah. just to understand even negotiation skills. Yeah. That everybody, if 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 anything that can make anybody 
extra money, yeah. be a salesperson. Yeah. Sell anything. Yeah. Sell water to fish. Yeah. Salesperson, <laughs> sell water to fish. Yeah. If you can sell, yeah. money should not be that yeah. difficult to come by. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I usually ask this question. This is the last question I ask, but I'll ask it in an inverted sense because you sound like you're in a really good place money-wise and everything. I guess my question would be, when you when you when you are starting this journey, um, yeah. when you are at Daystar, did you see this for yourself? Did you see this um, as potential and things that you would be able to um, achieve within a decade? Uh, to be honest, no. Yeah. I it was a lot of passion and hobby. Mm-hmm. It was a hobby for me. Yeah. Then later I started realizing, no, I can't just be. I can't always be too nice. Yeah. One of my mentors told me, Bright, you are not. You're not getting paid for your value. Mm. And that was one mentor. My life coach also told me the same mm. thing. It's like, right, you don't know how many people will pay you for the kind of things that are in your head. Yeah. And the abilities you have. So I said, okay, wait, what do they mean? But I'm like, I love, I love what I'm doing. I'm, I love talking to people. I love to, to, to go present. They're like, no, somebody has to pay you for that time. Yeah. So being able to bring the correlation of time, money, value yeah. once i was to stream those together and i was like okay i think this is a new way yeah and i think it's also a plan for the future this can become a main source of income you never know yeah. there's a guy i know who does uh, who's actually an evangelist evangelist for a particular software yeah solution yeah when i went to present with him he was the main he was the guy to open the cover the the, the, the conference mm-hmm. and i became the main presenter mm-hmm. he spoke for 10 minutes i spoke for two hours mm-hmm. guess what he gets paid <laughs> crazy <laughs> sort of amount of money and his job is to travel around the world and just to do 10 minutes presentation of opening the conference can you imagine that's his job he lives in san francisco he gets yeah. paid almost three hundred thousand dollars to open and close conferences. to open and close conferences and he doesn't even live yeah. in san francisco half the time because yeah. he's traveling yeah so rent low yeah <laughs> he doesn't take a big house yeah and that's the thing so there's a there are various ways to be able to actually be able to generate income yeah we just need to find what works for us be able to collaborate with other people and also consult people when it comes to financial um, advisory yeah i consult a lot of people for that just to understand how can i save what should i do my, my personal banker is really good at that yeah she'll tell me don't put money here put it here try this plan try this it's not going to work for you so she's very very calm with me yeah, yeah. okay that sounds great. Um, I think I have I have had um, easily one of the most interesting I think uh, conversations we've had on here. Um, I you. hope you guys enjoy it, and we will see you on the next episodes.